said I was funny. What's funny about me? My haircut, my clothes. All right, you've had your fun. Hey, come on, lads, step aside. What are you going to make us? If we have to. Spinsley! Leave it. The one in the blue jacket, he's a friend of mine. Does Michael Hyde know you've been squiring his wife behind his back? Thought not. Do you realise what you've done? Yeah, yeah, I think I do. Oh, Frank! I'm dead in this town now, thanks to you! Be careful, Frank. And you. Change of plan. I've just been speaking to our deputy director. You're to take him back to Sunhill tonight. Do you want to read, Gov? Um, Frank. Such as the property news, much improved, bars on all windows, comprehensive alarm system. Don't you ever give up. Well, I haven't yet. Manchester Piccadilly now approaching Plum. So, what have you got for me? Black Mariah. I'm not used to all this, you know. Please, just give it a rest. Jim, is there any chance of a lift uh, later on? What, to your place? Wouldn't it be better off getting a taxi? Oh, well, it's too much trouble. Sarge, it's a bit out of my way. It's not that far out of your way. It's a good half hour. Yeah, hello, this is John Bolton. Yeah, I'm at Euston Station. I've been told to wait for a van. It's not here. What's going on? All right, I'll hold. It's not going to take half an hour, not on clear roads, not this time of night. Even on clear roads, it's a good half hour. How long are you two been married? Isn't it about time you got some counselling? Was that supposed to be a funny remark? Uh, no, no, I wasn't talking to you. Look, where did you tell the van to wait for us? Well, I'm here and there's no van. You could call them, find out what's going on. Well, keep trying. And when you've been in touch with them, call me on my mobile. Let me know what's going on, please. Thank you. Right. You two stay here. I'm going to find the British Transport Police. Sorry. Just wait here. Well, that's what we used to call an attitude problem. Is he always like this? Does he expect me to be his personal chauffeur for half a... Move! Excuse me, mate. I'm Detective Sergeant Bolton. I'm from Sunhill CID. I've got a prisoner with me and I'm expecting a van. Do you know anything about that? Not personally, no. Uh, you tried the loading bay. That's where you usually do pickups. <sighs> Call the station office if you like. No, it's all right. They're probably just a few minutes late. Look, I'll just wait for a bit longer. Thanks, anyway. Hello, Sorry, no one seems to know anything about your van. Well, I've just had a look, and there's no one at all down there now, just the bags on the ramp. Okay, Bravo, I'm 437, receiving. Yeah, go ahead, mate. Yeah, Sarge, apparently now that suspects can walk about, and his mind has gone too. John Bolton here, I'm at the Houston Concourse, I need an ARV fast, I've got an officer under fire. Could that be anything new, your lot? Yeah, where's this car park, how would they get there? Thanks. You're not going to leave them there, are you? I'd hold on to them if I were you. Jack Meadows, I want a 728 in triplicate. Right, where are they? Up to the end, turn right. right. Can you get your office to give us a hand here? We've got to point these guys in the right direction. Echo okay, Bravo from 437, receiving. You don't have to do this, you know, Jim. It's me they're after. Gov? You're the Gov now. 
I don't know about that. I'm just responsible for you. Well, anyway, it's your call. Well, I don't want to go back that way. Agreed. Let's go this way. At least this way's up. Then up it is. Back there, to the suburban platforms. All right, show me. You recognize him? Yeah. He does some work for Michael Hyde. Not anymore, he doesn't. You're right. Morning, Kerry. Any more news? They're on their way back from Houston via Hoban Nick Gov. They've been making statements. So Michael Hyde arranged the attempted head? That's what DS Bolton thinks. Yeah, Hyde's as dangerous in prison as he is out of it. I suppose the whole station knows they're bringing Frank Burnside in. Well, it's not the sort of thing you can keep quiet, Gov. High-ranking ex-copper gone bad. Oh, by the way, DS Daly's gone over to the Adams house. Oh? Whoever threatened the daughters had another pop. They got a letter bomb this morning. Plasticine. But it could just as easily be plastic explosive. Think someone's trying to tell them something? You can't protect us, can you? Mrs Adams. Uh, Michael Hyde's in custody. But he's still a threat. Well, he's a bigger threat outside of prison. Your husband's agreed to attend an identity parade. That ID might put Hyde away for a long, long time. Oh, George. How are you doing? Yeah, yeah, can't complain. So that's the stuff of legends, is it? Used to be. Hello, Bob. I think I've got a reservation. <clears throat> Empty pockets. Name? Oh, come on, Bob. I like to do things by the book. Burnside. Francis. I'd like to see Jack Meadows. So who on Hyde's team is likely to have planted this letter bomb? Well, Peter Laurie provides muscle for Michael Hyde. They're old pals. But Peter's not a leader. I reckon Mark Hyde's taking charge of things. Is that Michael's brother? Half-brother. Younger and a lot smarter than Michael. He's only just back in the country. Apparently spent a couple of years in Eastern Europe selling timeshares. Morning. Morning, lads. Morning, Gov. Well, I reckon the gym's due accommodation. And you, Sarge? Yeah, well, when you finish patting each other on the back, perhaps you could tell us exactly what happened. We're sure Michael Hyde's behind this hit. Yeah, according to the hitman that survived, it was Michael Hyde wanting Burnside killed. He was willing to pay ten grand. So why does he want Frank Burnside dead? He must have found out that Frank tipped us off. Or maybe it was because Frank was over the side with Michael Hyde's wife. Or maybe he was afraid that Frank could tell us about his operation. What can Frank tell us? Well, he won't say anything to us. He says he's only going to talk to you. 
Oh, does he now? Well, I'm not doing Fran Burnside any favours. You two get some sleep. You deserve it. Jeff, let's go and see Mark Hyde. Frank can wait. Oh, uh, receipts on my desk. That's Yorkshire for well done. There you go, Frank. Cheers, Bob. Can we get you a sandwich or something? Well, I wouldn't say no. All right, see what I can do. Any sign of Jack Meadows, yeah? No, he's still out. Catching criminals. Mark Hyde? Yeah? DCR Meadows, DS Durley, some help. Take a seat. What can I do for you? We're investigating a case of witness intimidation. That sounds serious. When did you last speak to your brother Michael? Half brother. Not since he was arrested last night. And actually, it's a mystery to me why he was arrested. Can you explain why two men with known connections to Michael tried to kill a prisoner being escorted back to London this morning? No, I can't. Two of my officers might have been killed. I don't know anything about it. You think your brother might? I believe Michael's in prison, isn't he? Hard to organise such thing when one's on remand, one would have thought. What do you know about the letter bomb? I'm a freelance financial consultant. I do. I have no knowledge of such things and I have no idea why you should connect them with Michael. I take a very hard line when my officers get shot at and families get firebombed. So don't play the innocent, Mark. I know you're a part of Michael's team. So you get word back to him that he's going to go down for a long time. He's beyond help now. Jack. Gives me no pleasure to see you here like this. Doesn't give me much pleasure either. You look tired. I've got a lot on my mind. You look well, considering. Considering I was almost killed today. All thanks to your DS Bolton. As I understand it, John Bolton helped save your life. John Bolton put my neck in the noose in the first place. You want to keep more of a check on what your fellas are up to? I'll take no lectures from you. So why did Michael Hyde try and have you killed? Was he worried that you'd tell us something? Could be. Do you have something to tell us? What do you want to know? Mark Hyde. Do you know him? I know him. What's his position in Michael's team? You're not thinking of pulling him in, are you? I've already had a word with him. Does that worry you? Well, let's just say that Michael Hyde's arrest has complicated matters. You're talking to Mark, might not have been such a good idea. Look, none of this is what it seems. Don't play the man of mystery, Frank. I suggest you call Assistant Commissioner Lomprier at the Yard. And why should I do that? Because I work for him. DCI Meadows, let's get on with it. Sir? I'll come straight to the point. For the past five years, Frank has been working undercover and reporting directly to me. The unfortunate conduct of your officers has now placed his life in danger. Now, my officers... Not only that, They've also ruined what Frank considered to be our best chance of success to catch a man we've been after for some considerable time. Your officer's behaviour in Manchester has blown the whole thing. My officers were attempting to arrest a man whose colleagues are even now intimidating a witness into retracting his testimony. Michael Hyde's a dangerous man. I make no apologies on behalf of my officers for getting him off the street. Michael Hyde is not the biggest fish in the pool. Not in your terms, perhaps. Unfortunately, sir. 
DCI Meadows spoke to Mark Hyde this morning. You spoke to him? Yes, sir, I did. Oh, well, that's terrific. Mark will be too spooked to go on. Look, would you mind telling me exactly what's going on here? The man we're after is a Croatian, Vjeko Korvic. He's a big-time heroin importer. And Hyde's involved with him? Not yet. Michael was about to arrange to meet him. Mark is the go-between. He lived out there for a while. Yeah, I know, selling timeshares. We do try and keep up. Well, Korvic's problem is how to launder the money he's made from drugs. Now, the plan is to buy up pubs, set up a chain. On the face of it, perfectly legit. I mean, it's only a step away from what Michael I's doing already. Frank has been cultivating Mark. He's our way to Vieko Kovic. Now, Kovic flew into the country in secret last Tuesday. A meeting was being arranged between him and Michael. Which obviously now can't take place. I mean, even if we were to find Corvitch, all we'd be able to pin on him is VAT evasion. Sir, if Corvitch is still in the country, I think I can persuade Mark to go ahead with the meeting in Michael's place. You're going to talk to Mark? Yeah. Well, and get your head blown off. Frank, Michael's already tried to have you killed. Yeah, well, that was personal. Because you've been having an affair with his wife. Why wasn't I informed of this? Well, I didn't think it was an operational matter, sir. Everything is an operational matter! I'm sorry, sir. Unfortunately, Michael found out, thanks to D.S. Bolton. Yeah, well, we'll leave that as it is. How do you suggest we proceed? Well, I think I can show Mark that it would be in his best interest for Michael to have a nice long stay in prison. And while he's there, Mark can take over. You need a moody release. I've got just the brief, and I'm going to need a contact. I've got somebody. They're a bit inexperienced, but they're good. Experience doesn't matter. It's just a face that won't be recognised. Frank, I can't sanction this. You'll be walking straight into a lion's den. Well, in that case, sir, I've had my neck on the block all this time for nothing. <sighs> all right, but watch it. I do not wish to lose a good DCI. Oh, yeah. Frank was promoted in the field. Jonathan Wrigley. I'm here to represent Frank Burnside. Oh, well. Uh, hang on, please. Thank you. What's all this about? I mean, why bring you down here? They haven't charged you, so why hold you? National Crime Squad, that's all they told me. Well, they've had their time, and it's run out. They don't charge you, you walk. Good. And there's something I want you to do for me. I need to see Mark. You, uh, do know there's a rumour doing the rounds. What sort of rumour? That Michael being arrested had something to do with you. Yeah, well, that kind of talk would dirty my reputation. I think it's time we put some people straight, don't you? I'll give him a call. Is Vieko Kovic still in the country? As far as I know. What is that supposed to mean? Well, Michael's arrest didn't do his confidence any good. And Mr. Kovic is a very nervous man when he's away from home. Look, do you think you can get him to meet with Mark? I don't know. I mean, if Michael's not there, what can Mark say? Oh, come on. You know as well as I do that Mark's the brains behind this. But Michael tells the brains what to think. Can you get word to Kovic to stay? There's too much at stake to bottle out now. I can get in touch with Kovic's people. Mark will be easier to track down. When I get you out, where will you be? With Kim. Under the circumstances, is that wise? Wisdom doesn't enter into this. But if the arrest was up in Manchester, why bring him down here? Well, National Crime Squad's orders, according to Jim. We may never know, then. Gary, can I have a word? He's not a happy man. What would you be? If he had to admit he was a good thief-taker, we all cross the line sometimes, otherwise we couldn't do the job. Well, yeah, but not to the extent that he did. Things were done a bit different in his day. Yeah, and look at the number of convictions that got crushed because of it. Yeah, well, whatever he did, they're not holding him. How do you know? Because he's just naval. 
I don't see that I could refuse, Gov. Remember, this is a covert operation. I mean, the fullness of time, everybody will be informed, but right now, the important thing is Frank Burnside's safety. Gov. Almost everybody here has an opinion about Frank Burnside. But as you don't know him, you can stay neutral, but don't get drawn in. Gov. Just watch yourself. Frank likes to take a walk on the wild side. Hello, Linda. Is Kim there? Look, can I come up? You've got a nerve. I think there's been some misunderstanding, Linda. There's no misunderstanding. Kim told me everything. You've got a lot to answer for. You two have really screwed everything up. This is none of your business, Linda. As long as you're in my home, it is my business. I need to talk to Kim. Does anyone know you're here? I'm expecting a phone call from Mark. Frank! Oh, thank God you're all right. <sighs> Mark's been here today. He wanted to know what was going on. Some copper spoke to him. What did you tell Mark? She told him the truth. He's not stupid. Linda, will you please just go and leave us alone? Michael's gonna kill you. He's already tried that, Linda. No one's getting killed. Michael's a psycho. I hope he goes away for a long time. Michael's been good to us. Everything was fine till he came along. Everything was fine for you, Linda. You got a nice car, you got a nice home. Doesn't worry you that he bashes her up. Michael loves her, he's crazy about her. Michael is just crazy. And all you're worried about is losing your meal ticket. You live off Kim and you turn a blind eye when he whacks her. So don't stand there and lecture us. What are we gonna do? You are gonna leave the country. I thought you'd be safe with Michael inside, but he's got too many connections. Mark said Michael had sent some people after you. Oh yeah. I have police protection. Don't joke about it. What else did Mark tell you? He said he didn't agree with it, but that he can't control Michael. What's worrying him is what you might say to the police. You being an ex-copper. Well, he thinks I might grass him up to save my own skin. You've still got friends. Police friends. You wouldn't say that if you saw the way I was treated today. Well, I told him you'd never tell him anything. I know you too well. Well, thanks for the reference. Stop it. This is serious. We've got money. Let's get out of the country. I can't. But you can. Well, I'm not going anywhere without you. You listen. I've got too much to sort out. I can't be worrying about you. I'm not going without you. Hello? It's Mark. Frank, there's all sorts of rumours going around. About me? Yeah. About what happened in Manchester. Now I'm trying to hold things together. I've got everyone running around like headless chickens. So what are they saying? That you grassed on Michael. And why would I do that? Well, I think that's obvious, isn't it? Kim? <laughs> Look, Frank, I have no opinions about you and Kim. I know Michael treats her. I love her. Like I say, I have no opinion. But I wouldn't grass Michael up to get him out of the way. I never believed you would. The police asked me about a man called Adams. Who is he? He's a guy who's going to testify against Michael. We're trying to put a bit of pressure on him. Shouldn't take much to make Adams crack, you know. He's got a lovely young daughter. Suppose he doesn't. Then he could put Michael away. Let's say Michael does go away. For a long time. Would that be such a bad thing? Michael and I are the same age. But up here, he's past it. So what are you saying exactly? Have you heard from Corvich? No. 
but I know he's nervous about Michael being arrested. It's very important that you have that meeting. He has to be reassured that everything is still on. Well, go ahead without Michael. You don't need Michael. It's your turn. Frank, you're not telling me anything I haven't thought before. I know. You know, Michael and I aren't close, but he is family. Mark, this is business. If we do this, we do it together, Frank. I can't do all this on my own. All right. I'll be in touch. Yeah. Large vodka and tonic, please. Do you want a drink? No, thanks. How did it go? All right. Considering now it might have gone. Tell Jack Meadows. So far, so good. I'm waiting for Mark to get back to me. I've planted the idea in his head. That it will be better off for him for Michael to be for Michael to be in prison. Now the next step is to bring the rest of Hyde's team round. Mark is arranging a meeting. So they're all going to be in the same place. Sounds like a good opportunity to round them up. This is not about Hyde's team. It is for the DCI. I want Vieco. I want Vieco Corvich. Now I expect him to send a man to the meeting. I don't care what the rest of Hyde's team think. It is vital that he is reassured. Mark must make that meet. How do you think the rest of Hyde's team will react? If you don't hear from me again, you'll know that my ideas were voted down. Cheers. You look tired. Lying to people takes it out of you. And I've been lying for a long time. The DCI asked me to tell you we're keeping a discreet eye on Kim Hyde. Having a car drive past every hour. What's she like? Michael likes to hit her. And before you ask, if she left him, he'd come after her. It's a nice dress. If you went abroad, I could join you. I'm not going anywhere without you. You can't make it ring. Where's Linda? I'm not my sister's keeper. She didn't come back last night. Maybe she went to see Mark. Why would she do that? Mark's clever. He's powerful. He's always sexy. Well, I've never seen him with a woman. I don't think that a cold fish like Mark could get close to anyone. Poor Linda. She's never had any luck with blokes. Neither did you. Till you came along. Frank, it's all gonna work out all right, isn't it? Yeah. Everything's gonna be just fine. It'll be Mark. Hello? So? Which one of you is under orders from Michael to shoot me? I think the general feeling is that Michael went a little far. Well, that's a very delicate way of putting it. You are screwing his wife. This is Sun Hill, not Sicily. We don't kill each other every time we fall out. Michael was out of order. Michael has been a law unto himself for far too long. The spell inside might cool him off. Now, this is not about my feelings. This is not personal. 
Michael is getting in the way of business. Tell Mr. Korvich that we'd like to go ahead and meet. You can't deal with Croatians. No offence, but you've got your way of doing things and we've got ours. Of course we can deal with them. It wasn't Mr. Korvich that Michael is worried about. It's Mark. Because he knows that Mark is smarter than him. Let's face it. Mark's smarter than a lot of us. Michael is worried he's losing his grip, and he's right. Mark is an asset to us. He can make us money. He's got a degree in business management. He's the future, the way forward. Last week, someone in this room tried to kidnap the Adams girl. Yesterday, the family was threatened again, and I ended up looking down a barrel of a gun. Now all that is Michael's way of doing business. And we've all danced to Michael's tune for far too long. Now he is going down. And when he goes down, he's going to go down for a long time. And if you're not careful, he's going to take all of you with him. So what are you getting at, Frank? Tell him. Well, since we're in the pub business, we might as well go legit. The capital's there. And we can use the business to launder Mr. Kovetsch's money. And that's a lot of money on which we charge commission. Come on. I'm not an accountant. No, but he is. He can cook up the books and stymie any investigation. Figures on paper are our best defence. We can put them between us and the law. What your boss wants, we can give him. Go back and tell him that. Sir, what do you got, Frank? Mark set up a meeting with Korvich for tonight, sir. Now, Korvich will want it fast. He's a nervous man. He won't want to hang around in this country for long. And the time and the place? I don't know that yet, sir. But you'll be there? No, sir. I thought if I wanted to go to the meeting, it might look suspicious to Mark. I don't want to push my luck. So you can't tell us where the meeting is? No. But I know a man who can. Mr. Wrigley. DCI Meadows, Sun Hill. And I believe you already know Detective Chief Inspector Burnside. Hello, Jonathan. I've got a warrant to search these premises. Oh, don't do that, Jonathan. I think you should hear what I've got to say first. The thing is, I'm going to need your help. Does Mark Hyde know about your day job? No. Are you going to tell him? Mark Hyde has arranged to meet Vieko Kovic tonight. And we need to know where. I don't know anything. The problem is, Jonathan, I already know everything about you. Such as? Such as? The money laundering. The drugs. Three cases of witness intimidation within the last year. You don't have any evidence. What do you think I've been collecting for the past two years? Stamps? Look, if I do agree to help you... We don't do deals. On the other hand, I'm the only one with the hard evidence. You help me, I might decide to be generous. Frank, if I do this, I'm a dead man. That is a problem. I'm sure we can find you a bed for the night. Well, uh, I don't know where the meeting's taking place yet. Then find out. Right, firstly, I'd like to apologise for keeping you all in the dark. But up until now, this has been a covert operation. So I'm sure you'll all appreciate that we didn't want to compromise DCI Burnside safety. OK. Our main target is a character called Vieko Kovic, who's a big heroin importer. Now, tonight, Mark Hyde has arranged to meet Kovic at the Alderborough Hotel. Nine o'clock, DCI Burnside is going to go in there with the team to pick them both up. Now, we've also got good information on the whereabouts of Mark Hyde's gang. So the rest of you will form up into a team 
tasked with their arrest. We'll have a full briefing in about half an hour. Uh, Jack, can I just say a couple of words? Yeah, sure. Um, I've done a lot of stuff over the last few years that I can't talk about. Suffice it to say that I've had to think on my feet, never more so than over the last couple of days. But I would like to say that I owe my life to DC Jim Carver and DS John Bolton, and I thank them. And I apologise for not being able to take them into my confidence earlier. OK. Hyde's team have all been picked up. Good. Well, let's go. I'm here for the meeting. Frank Burnside. That's why I encourage Nicky Dib to know that. Hold it right there, police. You're all under arrest. Mr. Corvich, Frank Burnside. We met in Marbella last year. Where's Mark? Not here. I don't know. Mr. Corvich, I'm arresting you on suspicion of bank fraud. You do not have to say anything, but it may harm your defense. You do not mention when questioned something which you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Mark Hyde didn't show then, Kerry. No, Gov. I don't know why. So where's Frank Burnside? Why isn't he with you? Well, he should be here somewhere. Frank? Has anybody seen Burnside? I haven't seen him since we went into the hotel suite. Hey, you tell Frank Burnside he's a dead man. You better come with me, Kerry. I think I've got a good idea what he might be. Busy. I've got to get you out of here. Oh, thank God you're back. I've been worried sick. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Has Mark called? No. Good. I want you to go and get some things together. Enough for a couple of nights and be quick. Right. I'll get your stuff, Frank, okay? No, just yours. You are coming with me, aren't you? No. Why? I can't. I'm not going without you. Listen, there's something I've got to tell you. I'm a police officer. I didn't want to tell you like this. I wanted to pick my own time. Why didn't you tell me before now? You lied to me. I've been lying to everyone. But me? That was the worst part, lying to you. But I swear, I never lied about what I felt. You chopped Michael. Yeah. I did you that favour. Now listen, Michael's firm's been arrested, and so have most of Mark's mob. But Mark's still out there. Now, if he gets to you, he's gonna use you to get to me. I don't care what you think about me, but we have to move now. Say nothing. Nothing. Hello, Mark. What's he doing here? We were just leaving. Tim, he's a copper. He's a bloody copper. Shut up, Linda. Well, well. Must be like that, Frankie boy. I didn't think you'd be so stupid. Mark, get the money. So you planning on doing a runner? Don't be stupid, Linda. Mark, we can't go without the money. It's under the bed. You sure about this, Mark? Absolutely sure. Watch him, Linda. That's not your money to take. It's mine. It's Michael's money. And Mark's his brother. How far do you think you're going to get? Get over here where I can see you now. Come on, move. Did Frank tell you anything about Mark Hyde, Kerry? 
No, Gov. Seems to have more time for him than any of the others. Look, Gov, I know I don't know DCI Burnside very well, but... Take it from me, Sherry. You don't know him at all. June. Yeah, it's DCI Meadows. Armed suspects on premises. It's a penthouse flat above 63 Ross Street, E2. Get an ARV down here. Yeah, in June. Try and find me the phone number of the flat. Bit of a mistake, wasn't it, coming back here? How do you know you weren't followed? That's none of your business. And we weren't. It was stupid. No comment. Expecting a call? You really helped me, didn't you, Frank, eh? All that stuff about taking over. The big speech. Pete wanted to kill you. I said no. I should finish you now. Why don't you? I'll wait outside the hotel tonight. I saw you go in. You pulled Wrigley earlier, didn't you? You tell me, pal. Come on, he's just trying to wind you up. Let's get out of here. We can't yet, remember. This is a passport drop, isn't it? The money, the phone call. This is the only way you're going to get out of the country. Yeah, well, nobody knows I'm here. <laughs> and you expect us to believe that? Do you expect us to believe anything you say, Frank? How much does she know? She knows nothing. What, you expect us to believe that as well, Frank? You'd better, Mark, because it's true. Mark, it's gone 10.30, give him a ring! He'll be here, stop worrying! Yeah, just a minute. Have you got a pen? Yeah. Mark, I want a drink. No. I want a drink! Mark? I'd like to talk to Mark Hyde. What's happening? Wrong number. Mark, I'd answer that if I were you. If it's the police, you might be able to cut a deal. Yeah? Mark, this is DCI Meadows. Now, there's no need to let this situation get out of hand. You're completely covered. If you come out onto the balcony and look across at the flats, you'll see. Bastard. Mark, you'll have to give yourself up. Otherwise, they'll come in. Crawling with them. Don't answer it! But it could be John with the passport! No! Stop it! Linda! No! Paramedics. Yes, Gov. I didn't mean it! Oh, God! Oh, God! I didn't mean it! Drop it, Frank! I'm calling an ambulance! I said drop it! I said I'm calling an ambulance! No! Will you please call an ambulance? You know, Frank, this is the first time I've seen anything real from you. Oh, for God's sake! Please, Mark, you got to help her, please! Shut up, Linda! Look, this is not her fault! Now, you're not gonna let her die just because you're angry with me! She's my sister! Oh, God! Oh, God, she's going! Please, Mark, please! Get up! Frank, get up! Mark, stop it! Don't, Mark, stop it, please! Answer! 
cigarette! Jack! We need help! Kim's been shot! All right, Frank! Paramedics are on standby! Okay, Mark! We're listening! So don't try anything foolish! She's losing blood! Shut up, Frank! I want to do a deal! All right, Mark! What do you want? I want a car to take me and Linda to the airport! Well, that could be possible! And we're taking him with us! Which terminal do you want to go to? What? Which terminal? He means where do you want to fly? Shut up, Frank! What difference does he make? Just goes to the airport! We need to know exactly where you're going, Mark, before he can get you a car. Look, I'm not playing games here. You get the car, and then we decide on the flight. We well, must have some idea of where you want to go, Mark. Get an ambulance! OK, that's it! He's out of it, Jack! Get some paramedics over here! I'm on my way, Frank! One of those paramedics! Not out of there! Over here! I think she stopped breathing. John, I'm going to be out of circulation this morning. We've got Assistant Commissioner Lamprey arriving any minute now. DCI Burnside's not coming in, so I'm going to have to sit on the interview with Kovic. Has there been any word from him, Gov? Well, his girlfriend died last night. We're not going to be top of his thoughts, are we? He must be feeling pretty guilty, then, eh? Why do you say that? Well, walking out on an operation. Going straight over to Hyde's place. He left himself an air wide open. Well, I don't think he had an option. I think she was something quite special to him, actually. Hello, Jack. Has uh, AC Lumpria turned up? Not yet. Hello, John. Cough. Jeff. Any chance of a cup of coffee? Yeah. So what exactly are you doing here? I've come to interview Corvich. Jack, I'm not staying at home. Sorry about Kim. Yeah, well, I, I don't want to talk about it. You shouldn't be here today. I can do this interview for you. Thanks for the offer, Jack, but no thanks. I don't know whether this is the right time to say it. I hear we might be working together again. I hope we can get along. Me too. I think we've always uh, agreed on the basics. Sir. Morning, Frank. Jack. Please pass my congratulations to the troops. Yes, sir. Thank you. Might we uh, borrow your office for a minute? Yeah, of course. Thank you. I suppose I don't have to point out the risk you put yourself under last night. No, sir. I suppose you've had any sleep either. No, sir. If you're thinking of doing this interview, Frank, I don't think you should. You're in no fit condition. Why don't you let Jack Meadows cover for you? Well, if it's all the same to you, sir, I think I'd rather finish the job. All right. Come on. Sir, I hope this won't affect my chances at the crime hockey job. I'll put in a word for you, if you want it. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, sir, um, could we have a moment, sir? I'll go and get Kovac. I'm sorry, Gov. I only heard about Kim this morning. Yeah. I owe you, Jim. I might be able to swing you a medal for saving my life at Euston. <laughs> I've got nothing to wear it with, Gov. You were always on my side. I appreciate that. I never doubted which side you were on. Really? Well, I'll tell you something, James. There were occasions over the last few years when I did. <laughs>